Hello my friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anovella. Today is my mid-year check-in. So we are in July and since January I've read 165 books. So to pick 10 favorites was not an easy task, but still, um, yeah, there, there are some books that I will never forget, that's for sure. So I'm pretty sure no matter what happens, no matter what I read, that a couple of those will definitely be in my top 10 by the end of the year. So I will start with a couple of older books. The first is a Belgian book. It is I Who Have Never Known Men by the Belgian author, the, the French-speaking Belgian author Jacqueline Hartmann. Jacqueline Hartmann was a, a psychoanalyst and uh, in her spare time she wrote really good books. I Who Have Never Known Men is a sort of a sci-fi, more psychological thriller. Uh, it's uh, set it's somewhere in the distance, uh, somewhere in, I don't know when, uh, but there are uh, 30, 40 women that are locked up in a sort of a bunker. The women are all in their 40s, 50s, and there's one young girl there that was maybe 10, 11 when she was locked up. So they are there now for a couple of years and they are not allowed to touch each other. Uh, there is no interaction whatsoever with their um, guardians. And uh, yeah, it, it's, they just have to keep themselves busy. And then, then at a certain point when one of the guards is bringing food, just when he opens the, the lock, there's an alarm and the guardian runs away and the woman waits and they don't know what to do and then the girl she gets up and she opens the door and she sees that everybody has gone all the all the guards have gone they have disappeared so she dares for the first time in her life to go upstairs and uh, she sees a vast vast plane a field this as far as you can see there is nothing just green grass and that's it and uh, yeah they wait a couple of days and then they decide well what are we going to do uh, and they decide to take all the food that they can get and they go uh, out to see um, if they can find other people and they walk for months and months and months and then they finally find another bunker but in there yes everybody has passed away and they were not so lucky and they yeah, take all the food and the shoes of the guards and everything and uh, they walk again for months and months and months and that's the beginning of the novel. It's a very short novel. It's only like a, it, it's more of a novella and it's unforgettable. It really is really well written. Um, it's, it's very psychological. It's very what if. And yeah, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So I'm sorry, there's a window there and the sun is reflecting onto my face. So yeah, uh, that was the first book. And then the second book is a very old book. It's um, a book that I only just read. It's, I think it's from the 50s. It's The Invasion of the Body Snatchers by Jack Finney. I really, really, really loved that book. I adored it. It was um, so much better than I assumed. And, and yeah, it, it, it it asks some very important questions. I don't know if you know the story, but it's about um, a sort of a plant that takes over people. And they are like shells. I mean, all their personality is gone. It's them, but it's not them. And yeah, it's, it's a really weird uh, invasion of another planet. 
by Vile Plants. So yeah, it's a really good read. I, I highly recommend it and I really enjoyed it. Then the third book is uh, more recent. It is uh, Ozebol by Marit Kaplan. So this is Ozebol is a very small village somewhere, I believe in Norway or Sweden, but it's on the border of both countries. And there's only like, a, uh, I believe, Less than a hundred people there, living there, and Marit uh, went to visit them, all of them, and uh, she recorded uh, what they said about their uh, village and, uh, and the village life. And she wrote it down like it is in verse, just with a beautiful sense of rhythm. It is absolutely stunning, and there are there are stories, especially about the two friends, that you will never forget. It's so beautiful. It's um, it shows how beautiful life in a small village can be, and also how difficult. And their problems are very very real. They have some really important issues, and for instance, there's a. a a bridge that doesn't get repaired because there are not enough funds and stuff like that. It's really good. It's absolutely beautiful, well written, well done, absolutely wonderful. And then um, another book that I highly enjoyed and I only gave it four stars at the beginning and now it's a five star read. It's Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. Enter Ghost is the story of a young a, a woman in her late 30s. Uh, she is uh, an actress but not a very well known actress, or not extremely successful. She breaks up with her husband uh, with her boyfriend and uh, decides to travel to Israel to meet her sister and stay there for a while but her family is Palestinian so yeah they really uh, should they live on the West Bank and and uh, yeah it's uh, there she is asked to um, join a theater company and to play Hamlet and um, yeah, the, the Israeli government does everything to make their lives difficult and impossible. And uh, yeah, they see an, yeah, a political message in Hamlet and, but it's impossible. But Hamlet is written like 400 years ago, so it's impossible, but still. And so, yeah, their lives are made very difficult. It's absolutely wonderful and it's very, very interesting to learn more about uh, what's happening in Israel with the Palestinian people. And then a Dutch book that I really enjoyed. It's also not a recent book, but also but very good nevertheless. I just read it last month and that's the Twin by uh, Herbrand Bakker. The Twin is about a man in his late 50s and he is living on a farm together with his father and he doesn't really enjoy farm life. It's not really for him. And then we go more and more into back where uh, we find out why he is on the farm and why his brother passed away and, and his twin brother and then why he came back and uh, took over the farm and, and then uh, at a certain point the ex-girlfriend of his brother comes over and she asks if he could take care of her son that is named the same that is that has the same name as his brother and uh, for a couple of months and when the boy is there he realizes that he should live his own life and not his father's and uh, yeah it's a very 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 beautiful book absolutely wonderful it's also quite short the next book you have to read two books to really appreciate it. I 
advise you to first read um, Disturbance by Philippe Lanson. This Philippe Lanson is a survivor of the Charlie Hebdo shooting and he, uh, the day he was shot, um, the man is, is, let me reverse a bit. So Philippe Lanson is um, a book critic and the day before or the same day that uh, Charlie Hebdo was attacked, um, there was a um, a critique published by him about uh, Soumission, uh, a book uh, written by Huellenbeck. And uh, Soumission Submission is a book about uh, France where um, the, the Muslim party is now uh, reigning and, and is, is, is in power. And yeah, uh, Philippe Lanson wrote a critique about that book and it was very strongly, it, he was very strongly against the book. And that same day, uh, Philippe Lanson gets shot by Muslim extremists. And Wellenbeck was uh, very much shocked by what has happened. And he stopped his uh, promotional campaign immediately for his book uh, submission. Now, Philippe Lanson wrote a book about his uh, recovery. Uh, he actually, literally half of his face was blown off and um, he stayed, I believe, two years in hospital and he never lost faith and he never complained and he never was angry towards the extremists. And he has so much power in him and so much grace. It is such a marvelous book to read. Now, the book that goes with it is by Michel Welbeck. Half of that book is a sort of ode to uh, Philippe Lanson and his book. Uh, it is called um, Anéantir, uh, Annihilate, and it is a wonderful, wonderful book. And yeah, those two together is, is, is remarkable, absolutely remarkable. So you have to read them, if, if you can read them together. Not many people know that uh, a big part of uh, Annihilate is about Philippe Lanson and his book um, Disturbance. You really, really have to read it. It's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Then um, another Dutch book, uh, not yet available in French. Oh yeah, uh, Annihilate is available, I believe, um, in September, October, I believe. Uh, the next book is not available yet in English. Uh, it is Alcibiades by uh, Ilya Leonard Pfeiffer. Alcibiades was a historical figure. He was a Greek and yeah, he was uh, the, known as the most beautiful Greek man in history or in Greece and he had long hair and he was a master uh, strategic and yeah they call him also um, uh, a traitor and all kinds of things he was a very 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 complex person I hope this will be translated very soon uh, this book is uh, just as good as um, the Memoirs of Adrian uh, by Marguerite Yusenar. Uh, he was highly inspired by her work and uh, he really looks up to her, but he is, of course, a writer of his own, so it's different, but it's also very, very good. And a lot longer. 
Now the next book is also not yet translated. I'm sorry, it's a graphic novel. Uh, I will be very short. It is Vel by Sabine Clément and Mieke Verzep. It's a Flemish book and yeah, it's marvelous. It's so beautiful. It's about grief and uh, accepting your body and uh, relationships, uh, messy relationships and everything that goes with it. It is absolutely marvelous. Now, don't worry, I will stop here uh, with the untranslated books. Um, uh, the next book that blew me absolutely away and will definitely will be in my top three of uh, 2023 is The House of Doors by Tuan, uh, Tan Tuang Eng. Uh, this is a remarkable, remarkable story. Uh, so multi-layered, so easy to read, but still, oh, there's so much to learn. And so, yeah, it's really wonderful. So. Um, it is set in Kuala Lumpur uh, in the 20s, I believe, and um, so there's a, uh, yeah, a, a small club of expats, uh, English expats, and there's a couple uh, that is there, and then William Somerset Maugham with his uh, lover. William Somerset Maugham is officially married, but he <laughs> hides from his wife to be with his uh, boyfriend and yeah the lady doesn't really agree she thinks all that gay stuff is really weird but throughout the book she um, she more and more accepts the facts and she is way more complex that you would uh, grant her for and it is absolutely absolutely beautiful and then in the backdrop there's also uh, her best friend who kills uh, her lover, claiming that he tried to kill her just to save face. It's a uh, wonderful, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. So well written, absolutely wonderful. Then maybe the most beautiful book I've read this year and uh, that really touched my heart is Fractured Soul by Akiri Akira Mizubayashi. Uh, this was written in the French and translated uh, so um, and translated into English. Akira Mizubayashi is uh, Japanese, but he is a translator and he really loves the French language and he um, only writes in French and he wrote this beautiful, beautiful book about a, a man. Uh, whose biggest hobby is playing with the violin and he has one son, uh, Ray, I believe, and he, um, uh, yeah, the, 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 it's 1938, 1939, I believe, and uh, at a certain point he is um, uh, rehearsing with his uh, Japan, uh, Chinese friends and uh, the, um, um, the the Japanese military enters the room and uh, uh, quickly uh, Ray was hid in the closet and uh, the, the violin of his father was destroyed and uh, his father was taken away and never came back. And then many, many years later, early 2000s, uh, we have now uh, Ray, who has become Jacques. Uh, he is a violin builder and repairer, and his uh, masterpiece is, of course, the destroyed uh, violin of his father. He re repaired it completely and absolutely perfectly. And he meets a young Japanese violinist who wants to play that violin. It is absolutely wonderful. What a beautiful book. What a beautiful book. It is heartbreaking, but not a tearjerker. It's so delicately, delicately done. Absolutely wonderful. Now, special mentions. Um, together with Ollie from Criminoli, I'm reading uh, Patricia Highsmith's work, and I am blown away by her work. There are 
of course some books that aren't that great but um, for instance uh, The Sweet Sickness and Deep Water are masterpieces absolutely masterpieces they are not quick reads and the 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 characters are very complex, likeable, but you are not supposed to like him. And yeah, it's it's really wonderful. I um, we are both really enjoying her work and her her books. It's it's uh, she was an amazing writer. And then um, the best horror that I read this year is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I really enjoyed uh, the dynamics between the brother and the sister. It's a whole lot more about... Uh, I also buddy read that uh, together with uh, Ollie from Criminali and we both enjoyed it. It's it's very delicate also and very interesting. The, the dynamic between brother and sister is very complex and very well done. And uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the creepy part was absolutely wonderful. So I really enjoyed that. And then the biggest surprise for me uh, was a book that I just recently read was uh, For Die Great Pain, Have Mercy on My Little Pain. I forgot who wrote it. I will put it in the picture. Um, this was a book that I would never read, but I read it without reading the blurb and absolutely adored it. It's about two uh, women in the 15th century in England, Norwich, I believe, and one is an anchoress and the other is um, a mother of 14 children and they both have visitations by Jesus and one is very secretive about it and the anchoress is very secretive about it and then the mother is very open about it and uh, people mock her and uh, laugh at her and scorn her and yeah it scold her and yeah it's it's a beautiful beautiful book yeah it's amazing and then yeah a wonderful surprise um the reason why I started this channel was to uh, promote fiction that is coming from my part of the world. Uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, Germany, you know, uh, fiction that is often overlooked because mostly when people read translated fiction is mostly from Scandinavia. Um, and Asia, but there's still, and, and uh, Latin America, but there's still a lot more to read. And yeah, one of the books that I read, uh, Julian by Fleur Piretz, is a magnificent, beautiful, heart uh, heartbreaking story about um, a real story. It, it's not really a story, it's a it's non-fiction actually. It is uh, Fleur and Julian were um, a couple, the, uh, a lesbian couple, and they had um, a mission. They wanted to get married in every country where um, gay marriage was legal. But unfortunately, after the fourth marriage, uh, Julian became ill and passed away uh, because of a very aggressive uh, cancer. And this book is about grief and, um, yeah, hope and, um, yeah, uh, love. And it is so beautiful. It really makes you think of um, Joan Didion. And, yeah, it's uh, about true love and, and uh, you can feel the love uh, that Fleur Piret had for Julian in it's so tangible and uh, yeah, the happy news is that I contacted uh, Three Times Rebel that is um, uh, English based but mostly Basque people uh, 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 publisher and I contacted them and I said well they only 
uh, translate uh, or publish uh, female authors from small uh, language languages that write in small languages and of course Flemish is a very small language and uh, I thought well Julian would be really something for them and uh, I wrote them a mail and then I uh, they asked me if I could make uh, a book report and I did and then I got them in contact with uh, Fleur Piretz. I have never met Fleur uh, so far. And uh, yeah, they hid along. And, and uh, in September, uh, Julian is coming out in the US and in the UK. So I'm so glad that you will be able to uh, read this book. I will definitely talk about it uh, when the time comes. So yeah, that, for me, it feels like a victory because that's what I was in it for. I really wanted to show the world that we have some brilliant writers. And if I, thanks to my channel or thanks to uh, the fact that I, I dare to contact uh, uh, a publisher without even knowing the author, and still pull it off. I'm, I'm really happy for both of them. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful working relationship. So yeah, the book is already translated. So it's uh, it's marvelous that, to hear that it will be published in September. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite proud of myself. <laughs> Anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you liked my mid-year check-in. Um, there are a lot more books to talk about and to read. And yeah, it, it can only get better. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.